Good morning guys, welcome back to the farm vlog. We are staring into the McLaren 12C. As you guys have been following my journey, this car hasn't been running ever since we moved it to the farm. It was still running after the repaint. And then after that, because of the high humidity here, McLaren has a tendency of having really bad wiring harness and we had some humidity corrosion and then some of the modules broke down. Today we're going to be tearing into the car. Mark and Norman are here and we're going to be wiring in the car with a PDM system. So shameless plug, I am the importer and distributor for the AIM PDM system. This is the PDM system or a power distribution module. It basically eliminates the need for relays and fuses and everything can be run through here. Obviously all the major components for the body wiring and the body harness, which includes like the headlights, the radiator, possibly the fuel pump. We're going to figure out what needs to be wired into this and then what needs to be wired into the Cyvex ECU. So we do have a Cyvex ECU for this car and I've decided that because we don't have a proper McLaren service center here that I'm gonna actually convert this into a race car, which means we're gonna lose the active suspension and the active aero unless one day I'm gonna be able to figure out how to program like little Arduino so that we can do the arrow thing to start working again. But eventually I'm gonna to have to figure out also coilover setup for this so that we can get it on the road. We are working with GMG Racing on ordering a Ricardo gearbox so that we can convert it to a sequential gearbox. And this is the PDM system. You guys have seen me wire this into Victoria if you guys have been following the channel. And Mark, actually has wired in more PDMs than I have already. So he's here today. Hopefully we can bang up a quick job and get the car running. So this one has the terminal harnesses and the Surlock connector. And we're gonna be connecting it to a nice display. Now I have two displays on hand. I have the six inch dash and I have the 10 inch dash. And we're actually gonna use the same system to wire into the R32 Skyline also which Norman and I will be studying after we make some space for Mark to work and pull out some harnesses. So it's interesting because we're also gonna save weight in the car. It's gonna be easier for us to diagnose. We're gonna get rid of certain things that are locked into McLaren. And if you guys have owned a McLaren and know McLaren, it's one of the hardest cars to work on because everything is proprietary and being that they try to do everything in house. So it makes it difficult for us to source parts. And because the parts need coding, and we don't have a proper service center here so this is why we're deciding to do this because i really want to run this car it's one of my most sentimental cars this used to belong to my father so this is one of the cars if i have to sell every other car this car will definitely stay in the fleet and i do want to get it running because she looks very different it started off as a 12c spider and now it's got the custom 675 lt gt3 spider look so lots of work has been done to this car and definitely Hopefully we can get it running. So part of the modifications that I've ordered for this car are actually ordering 675 LT seats. Now, we're gonna unbox them. These came from the UK off a crashed car and I wanted to change the seats because the McLarens have notorious issues also with the modules not being super accurate and super reliable. And through my entire ownership of this car, which is, wasn't that long, when my dad passed away, I inherited this car 2015. And since then, I've replaced the seat modules twice and those replacements have been broken. So we ended up ordering these 675 LT standard seats, which means they're uh, fixed buckets. They're much lighter. Uh, there you go. So these are the 675 LT seats and they look pretty pristine. This came off a higher spec McLaren model and it makes sense because yeah, we're trying to eliminate some weight and eliminate the need for using modules. Our first step in dismantling this is tracing all the wiring. So because we don't have full wiring diagram for the car, we're gonna be tracing all this. And the pneumatic suspension, which is all the tubes that you see here, that eventually will all have to go. We're gonna dismantle all that 
because I will probably get air suspension for this car. The ABS module, we're gonna do an aftermarket Bosch ABS system, but we'll leave this first because that's there already. The first goal for this whole project is to get the car running. Once we get the car running, then we have to then proceed to remove the gearbox and the rear axles and hopefully we can convert that to a Ricardo system and then adding a pedal box later on and uh, we're gonna see how far along we can get some modules to work because this is a spider so there's a convertible top and there's a lot of things that we're going to lose like the pneumatic suspension the air brake paddle shifting obviously the cluster that's all gonna be gone we're gonna have to do a lot of aftermarket fixes the aircon i think we can hack it the radio we can do a like a bluetooth amplifier or a bluetooth radio hidden somewhere our module we have some sounds and then cyvex cc is already in and last time we got the car to start so hoping that end of the equation is still fixed but it does have the same wiring issues that we have with the rest of the car but at least this way we're sure already that every part and panel works and if you guys don't know exactly what's wrong with the car because i didn't state it in the intro when you key it in the car starts beeping beep 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 and uh, the cluster doesn't work and when i use the obd scanner to try to activate let's say like the headlights or the signal lights nothing works but once in a while once in a blue moon the car will start and if it starts it doesn't want to engage into gear and yeah nothing works so we toyed around replacing the body control module i bought a software that allows me to program the module but no luck doesn't recognize anything because plugging onto the OBD port basically wasn't giving us any response of the car. So that's why we're doing this. Um, it seems crazy at first, but at least this way I won't be hostage to McLaren and we can fix the car on our own and most of all, get it running and usable because right now it's a dead brick of a car. Here's everything what we removed so far, gauge cluster, top light, the center console with the suspension modes to start the radio, the handbrake, electronic, the windows, the shifting, that's the module that we replaced, the keys, and then a manual. The boys are underneath the dashboard now deciding on what to do and how to figure out how to wire in the rest of this. Okay guys, huge update. We're ripping out everything. We decided to rip out the ABS module, rip out the suspension already. I need to message my friend. We're gonna get a probably a, a Porsche uh, power steering kit so we can run an electric power steering. But we're gonna make some space as much as we can so that we can pull the harness out, get the sockets, and then lay it back in. This is a huge undertaking. Making a mess. Destroying the car completely. <laughs> no return. No exchange. Removing everything that's uh, in the way. So we can figure this out. I've been trying to figure out the rooftop module. I got the rear window to go down. And I can't get the rear hatch to open or the tonneau cover as the UK Brits call it. I can't get the tonneau cover to open. We know how to trigger the motor to activate the pulling of the roof. But yeah, getting this to open is my next step. Gotta work it out. I'm seeing if there's a manual way to do it also, but yeah. It's not easy. Hey guys, good morning. We are back here and the boys are at it already. We're trying to get the top to open because that's one of the crucial bits to get the wiring on. So there's a locking system over here that we need to unlock so that we can raise this up. And then there's another locking system here. That's why there's a pin here. So we tried to power the circuit yesterday. I spent all of like two hours trying to sit in and re-tap everything as we could. But I think because the McLaren ECU and electrical system is CAN bus based, it's not that easy because it's data signals over just voltage and current. Here in the front, the boys have made quick work already. As you can see, you can see the steering rack already. And we are gonna remove more bits and pieces here. And I don't know what we're gonna revive just yet, but everything has to come out so that we can rebuild this car into a I guess part race car part street car just want to get it running it's such a useless car at the moment and it's such a beautiful car 
as you can see with our custom design we based it off a darwin pro aero 675 lt front but we made our own custom width custom fenders custom doors custom rear and this is a darwin pro hood it's the p1 style hood for now getting the soft top to work or the hard top to work hard wiring everything the rear has to open the rear has to unlatch before the roof will fold it sounds better now but it's still cool lang. we're missing one step and i feel it Ola, stop 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 so Yes, it's a cycle, sha, but it's locked. Put my camera inside the trunk and I found that there's a latching mechanism there. That's definitely a hook right there. So Norman actually pried it open. Now we get the rear tonneau cover to open and we're gonna actuate it now. Okay, so we're popping the latches manually because we still can't get that sequence. And then we're gonna actuate the roof. Is it actuated na lang with the hydraulic? Put it down muna. They just don't close it. Okay, turn on the hydraulic please. Testing our makeshift direct wire hydraulic system. Whoop! Reverse! <laughs> you locked it again. Okay, let's study why this isn't unlocking. We're gonna try to fold the roof and see if it'll unlatch from the front. Ayan. The reverse yun eh. Pitik pitik lang. Pag hindi siya so kailangan mag steady yung isa. Sige. Up. Oh. It's going up. No, it's going up. It's going up. Up, push up. Oh. It's going down. Down. Sige. Down. Umangat ng konti. Under. Sige. Yan, up. Up siya. Okay. This is attempt number five. <laughs> Trying to ground all these solenoids so that we can get the roof to pop down. Up. Try. Sige. Kailangan pa tulak eh. Oh. It sounded like it. Di ba? Parang nag-click na yung ibabo. Oh. Sige. Yan, yan, yan. Sige. Yan, yan. Go. Up. Yan, yan. Yan, yan. Yan, yan. Yan, yan. Oh, because it's a big load. Eh. Can we manually fold it? Lang? Sige. Fold. Convertible mode. <laughs> the big one is removing the fuse box and then cutting out the excess wire. Because nga, our problem also is, I don't know how to trace, but tong power cable, I guess, magamit natin. I don't think everything is that hexagonal aluminum wire bullshit that they have. Baka normal wire. Ito, normal. Ito dire, normal wire na diretso sa starter. Oo, oh, oh. at yan ang kapal din ng dilo. Oh. So we can use, I think, some wires. And then we'll just do an end-to-end -end tracing. The car is so dirty from the fiberglass modifications and it just gets everywhere. So now it's a good time to wipe everything down after we remove the accumulator system. Point of no return. <laughs> balik lahat, balik! <laughs> Okay guys, it is day three here in the crazy garage build project for the McLaren 12C but being ADD and I need to focus on something else because I can't help with the car because they're full already as it is. I started to bring out all the parts for the crazy R32 GTR project inspired by the Motive Garage down in Australia. They did an R34 with a VR38 and we are doing an R32 with a VR40. This is an alpha engine 
with 1000 horsepower. I used to have an R35 GTR, but I didn't like it that much. So this is where we're going to transplant the engine because the engine of this we rebuilt here in the garage and we're putting it into a 240C. This is a lot of work and I was looking at all the parts list last night and wow, I think I really have uh, gone off the deep end with this project, but we are going to inventory everything, writing down a love letter of parts that we need and then hopefully being able to order a lot of them because everything about this car will be custom. Now we have the work wheels over here. I do have a pandem kit already sitting over there. And then we have the items on the floor, the intercoolers, the turbines, the front diff gears, the R35 uh, front diff, and then the block. So I'm super curious to know how we're going to mount the four wheel drive system, how we're gonna adapt it. And we have the Albin six speed sequential gearbox. Thanks to the guys at Motive for sharing just enough information for me to get off the ground, but not enough information for me to finish this project. And we have some more alpha parts on the floor over here. I have the graveyard for R32 parts over here. I need to tear into the R32 transfer case right here and move that over there also so that it can mount on the Albin's gearbox. We do have a clutch kit as well. Now, show you the car. This is the VR38 block, but it is a VR40. And as you can see, it is branded and hand-built by Todd uh, from Alpha built this motor. And I'm super curious to know how much power we're gonna make but obviously I custom the intake plenum to purple. So we're gonna have to find a way to do a lot of purple touches. So we have to remove the front fascia, remove everything so that we can make space for this build. We're probably gonna end up cutting this whole face off and doing a custom front frame. And we're gonna have to figure out how to mount the axle so that we can connect back to the drive line. And lots of things to figure out for sure. So even power steering, we might convert the power steering to EPS. I'm not quite sure yet, but for now we should make some space, uh, remove as many items as we can here so that we can lower the engine and make some engine mounts first. First and foremost is to actually install the flywheel and clutch, or maybe not yet, but install the gearbox to bolt it on and put the transfer case on so we can figure out how the engine's gonna mount. And then after that, we have to complete every single part of this engine from the catch can, the manifold, our custom headers, our injector coils, crank sensors, uh, alternator, AC compressor, and the wiring loom. And I did have a Cyvex ECU for this, but it seems like it's gonna be a standalone system. So we might call our friends at Motec to send us an ECU. And this is a little crazy, but we're gonna go back to the McLaren and check on the boys. So boys have been busy stripping and stripping and uh, I'm going to send a love letter to my driver to buy some wiring and Mark is just happily cutting off excess wire. Norman's actually learning wiring as we speak and interesting that the, they're making quick work of this. So we're removing as much wire as we can because we're basically lightening the car and eliminating our chances for error also. And a lot of things are not going to be returned to the car, but I don't really care at this point. I just want to run the car. We did figure out this uh, system yesterday. So if you guys look at wiring and you think it's such a Actually, if you just trace wires one by one, it's okay. Don't let your brain confuse you with all the wiring together because that will really be confusing. But if you actually just hold one wire at a single time, then you know where that wire is going to go. And it's not that difficult. Right, Norman? Mahirap ba? Di naman. <laughs> it happened to Mark. <laughs> What's scary with this project is it's never been done. I don't, have not found anyone online that's done a streetcar to race car build conversion. And we're only doing this because we don't have a suitable McLaren dealer in the Philippines. I don't want to be at the mercy for McLaren. They actually told me from Singapore to ship the car to Singapore so that I can work on it. I'm like, forget it. Let me just do my thing, do the carport way and engineer everything. And uh, hopefully we can get running, but this is a huge undertaking. This white project and that R32 white project, it's a lot. They're both equally as insane. So I'm gonna put the camera down now and start working on the list for the R32 and we'll update you guys again later.
Still dripping oil pieces. But it's splitting open already. This was super messy, but we split the transfer case already. And there was a shifter linkage that was inside that you needed to remove through two pins. So we're gonna clean this transfer case and we'll line it up when we get back. Mark said he tried to crank it already. Maybe no fuel. Nice. Let's find out. Congratulations. Halfway there. At least. Yeah. At least two PDMs. Uh, uh Maybe it's looking for other signals. So decided to add some fuel. Maybe we're out of gas. So we're just adding a little fuel so that we can see if the car will start. I did get some wiring help from Toby. Toby sent me the wiring diagram for the Cybex ECU. But we'll see if this works first because it's already cranking and it's only day three. I think we're still lacking maybe power to... We're getting power on the ignition coils, that's why it's idling. But uh, yeah, maybe it's just gas. Okay, cranking. Something's turning it off, no? One more. So we tried to plug the pedal. And then we're gonna test it again. Testing again after plugging the pedal module. Hopefully this works. It almost sounded like it was one thing to fire longer. So we are downloading the Cybex manual so that we can download the new ECU software so that we can connect to the computer and find out what we're missing. Okay, first goal is to connect to the car offline searching. So we need to set up a private IP. Gagawa tayo ng base plate na cover. So Norman has been a darling to clean that it was so dirty, it was so black and now it looks so clean. So hooked it up to the Albins. And then now we're gonna bolt it on and after that we're going to see how to hang everything but I think we can start dismantling the face of the car also. Hey, welcome back to the vlog. I cut myself yesterday. There you go. Good job. Cut myself because we were removing the AC lines from the R32 and uh, that happened. But Norman is continuing to do work. We're just cleaning the engine bay out. We're gonna actually try to degrease everything and uh, see how else we can move forward. We're gonna try to make as much space as possible. I've been watching the Motive videos from the uh, YouTube channel of Motive Garage and it's been nine years since they did this build and I contact Printtech and they said they don't work on these cars anymore. It's so sad. I don't know why they would skip out on these cars and move into BMW. So we're trying to do a lot of guesswork. Our main goal is to try to complete a parts list so that we can prepare for the future state of this car. But for now, Norman is trying to figure out the small nuts and bolts, literally, so that we can hang the whole thing in the frame and make custom engine mounts and transmission supports. I am going to cut the transmission tunnel later. Hopefully this little finger doesn't get in the way of the cutting, but we got to make some space for the gearbox, which was already uh, put together. We have the transfer case on the gearbox already sitting on the floor over here. It looks so beautiful and brand new and uh, we should cover that hole so that nothing falls inside it. And then uh, we're gonna jump back and forth to the McLaren. Mark is still diagnosing the wiring for the ECU. I messaged a few friends about the wiring for the car and it looks like we still have to do a lot of guesswork. If not, we might convert to a Bosch ECU. I'm confused now. 
with the vlog because we're jumping between two major projects and that's a major project and that's a major project but there's nothing happening majorly with them both. I got a update also from Tate from GMG. He said we're probably going to get a Hewland gearbox for this thing. Now a Hewland gearbox for the McLaren and a Hewland gearbox for another project. So we're going to have two projects with sequential gearboxes but apparently I need to order a third sequential gearbox because Hewland won't make me a box because I'm just one. So basically these companies only converse with race teams and I'm not a race team, I'm an individual so I'm required to get an extra gearbox. But the state of the McLaren looks like this. Mark is diagnosing the wires one by one seeing what we missed and he's explaining how to use the resistance on the tester. So when you have a tester, a multimeter, you tap the wires and if the wire shows zero resistance then it's just a wire. Um, if it shows a number or a value then there's a sensor, a capacitor or some sort of resistor that is uh, changing the value of the lines and I think eventually we might have to dismantle the fenders. But that's the update for that. I do have some farm meetings and I am working on a few more things so I'll be back later. cleanup duties happening and to our best of our ability at least Norman's ability this is the cleanest that it's going to look for now until we decide to repaint the whole front. Cut out the transmission tunnel already so we can make some space. We're now going to line up the gearbox and then lower the car and see the angle. From there we can decide how to position the engine as well and so far so good obviously later on we're going to see well this full frame even the front chassis especially how soft the tunnel was when i was cutting it definitely have to see well many things we'll make our list so far it's growing and want to change these brakes not happy with a k-sport brand on this jdm car even the shocks definitely have to go or be changed. I don't know what we're gonna do later on, but lots of things still that need to be done. We're a long ways away from getting this to be the R35 that it should be. Hey guys, it's day five of the build and they've removed the whole rear panel for the McLaren and we're still trying to figure out why this car won't idle. So we're basically removing everything, which is good because I just noticed that everything is filthy. Nice from when we built this body kit way back in carport. So what's gonna happen is we're removing the casing for the rear roof or the roof that's the no cover and that way we have access to the wiring and Mark can see everything going into the firewall so that we can trace everything because we don't know if we're missing anything and it also gives me a chance to study how to remove the lines here and been chatting with the supplier to see if we can order some special struts so that we can get rid of this hydraulic system which is actually causing us some extra weight only problem is the mclaren has no front sway bar it only has a rear z bar which is this weird contraption there this is the z bar right here it's not a sway bar because it's a shape of a letter z from the back there it goes to the front there norman is making quick work for all the hydraulic lines. Trying to figure out what is wrong. Uh, Mark was saying all our wiring is intact, so still troubleshooting, trying to figure out why we are not idling. So the boys dropped the fuel tank, and it's a full aluminum fuel tank that sits behind the uh, monocell, and we're now checking everything in terms of these are the modules which control fuel, and then this is the EVAP canister which controls venting. And still, on our troubleshooting phase for the 12C. Okay, so we encountered an issue. The dowel pin here, which is what you see here, is actually too big. So we took a caliper and we measured the dowel pin and then we measured the pinhole and it doesn't fit. So Norman's gonna drill this side out. We were wondering why it wouldn't fit. This one was easy because that goes into the pilot bearing, which I need to order. I think we have a pilot bearing either. A little 
off center, but we're going to slot the engine in. Midday update, Mark and I decided to give up on the 12C wiring because there's something about the plug and play conversion of the Cybex that still requires the CAN bus to work, which means we're not gonna get that to work. So we aborted this project because we're still waiting for a solution for the suspension, a solution for the gearbox, and then after that, we can proceed to do the car. For now, I'm gonna reintroduce one of the other projects from the garage that we haven't updated in a long while, and it is the Volkswagen. Beetle. Bam! And if you guys remember this project, it was a pandemic project which became super extended, super long, and I ended up going a little crazy on it. And Mark is now wiring in the car because Norman is actually done. We had a lot of modifications for this car. First off, we had the long travel king shocks which need some nitrogen because we tried to put air in it and we're not getting any rebound obviously you've seen the conversion it's a sort of ratty baja conversion i guess the main highlight for this car is the engine the engine is a 2.3 liter motor from volkswagen and then we have it hooked up to this uh, screamer pipe and then we also have a new irs rear meaning independent rear suspension and the whole independent rear suspension is now basically allowing us to align the rear and getting us in the proper height without the camber. So if you can see the whole new box arm, that actually is an aftermarket modification already, which means this is hopefully going to handle better. Our initial problem before was when the cars raised up, the wheels are tucked in, and then when the cars flattened down, the wheels are tucked out. It's because it had a non IRS rear end, so now we've changed that, upgraded it. The tires are sticking out a little further backward and also a little further outward. So this thing needs to be sorted out. We do have some oils already available. I don't know if the fuel lines are in, the throttle cable needs to get plumbed in also or that's the handbrake we do need a rally handbrake for this sorry this is the new engine there's actually no oil in the engine yet which means you gotta add everything on and then uh, setting up the rear handbrake so we have a oil cooler here also to cool down the engine because the 2.3 liter is sort of maxing out what the engine can do already but yeah it's been sitting in the garage and new rear brakes disc brakes new front disc brakes also if i'm not mistaken brand new and i gotta get nitrogen so i can fill in the cartridges of this which we need to fix mount later on so those need brackets as well and hopefully hopefully you can get this running complete the front drive line before we even try to make some engine supports because we need to see the alignment from left to right and up to down. Lucky enough long ago when I had an R35 I decided to print the workshop manual and basically we need this guy over here the whole thing that mounts straight into the differential and we checked the R32 one and it's not gonna work so we need to order the R35 one so that we can go straight to the block, straight to the differential and we're gonna see if the boys down in Manila have something for us to work with if not, I gotta order all these parts Good morning! back on the Volkswagen. Yesterday, I gave it a good wipe down. It's still a little dirty because the paint is porous, which means we gotta get a sort of a matte clear coat. I am gonna do a sort of camel pattern later on with some black spots because uh, that's the theme already of it. And uh, there's some rust I wanna paint, so we are definitely going to do that. Mark is making quick work of this. Norman's still mounting the rear calipers. He's making some bracket for the rear calipers to go on. And we have a few things that we need to complete for fittings and like hoses but we are learning everything as we go along so hopefully by the end of this day we can try to crank I oh, know end of the day guy crank <laughs> start start, start. 
<laughs> I'm going to get a grinder and start grinding these sharp bits because there are a lot of bits here that need to be ground down. So look at this, like there's some areas you can snag. And after being cut the other day, last thing I want to do is snag some more. <laughs> Okay, the time is near. We're gonna go prime some oil. See if we can get this to run. Have one success rate for this weekend. Uh, Mark's busy wiring everything. Norman's laid out the brake calipers, uh, but he needs to weld it on the arm. And we gotta check if the oil will come out first. So we left an oil line down. Obviously none of the taillights are hooked up just yet. We have our switch panel right here. Look at that. Pretty cool. Mark's connecting the battery finally. I gotta get some nitrogen gas for these reservoirs. And yeah, we're gonna prime the oil. Battery. Dead battery. Clarin battery. <laughs> oil doesn't seem like it's moving around and there's some badass wobble in the main pulley i don't know if that's normal but new oil mm -hmm. the dipstick doesn't show anything eh? prime okay, na. okay our oil is coming out we're gonna connect the oil cooler on already and prime it some more because that's a whole nother liter of oil probably. And we're gonna keep priming so that we can circulate the oil fully before we fire up the car. Wild, no? Fill her up. For konti lang. We don't know kung may kalawang yung ating line. We have a fuel filter here. We have to change this hose, ah, Kasi garden hose siya. Garden hose. That's, that's not a fuel hose. Look how saucy our little filler is. It's battery operated. <laughs> and I could see the fuel filter getting some fuel. So apparently our fuel has some uh, contaminants because our gas tank is dirty. We should have washed the tank norms. Oops. Excited. <laughs> I know, but sometimes you use the filter. Eh. Green yung fuel natin ah, but naging gold yan. <laughs> Adding some more fuel. We are putting some gas straight down the barrel. Fire extinguisher? Yeah. I don't know. Power pump. on. Firing. Haven't given up? No. Want me to make pump pump here also? Okay, ready. Start. Almost a good starter. I know. We're close. It's already. It's already buttering. Final try before closing. Lithium, man.
Okay, there you have it. One successful car in the three car build over the last seven days. The Volkswagen is idling. The boys are gonna finish it up and we're probably gonna end this vlog because it's super long already. It's kind of confusing. We started with the McLaren 12C, went to the R32 GTR and then went, ended up in the Volkswagen and it wins. The old school engine along with the carburetors, along with the simple ignition and wiring was the easiest to fire up and then uh, the McLaren being the hardest because it's running proprietary systems we just watched the DDE vlog today and they were running a transmission module I wonder if we can run that on the car in case we can't get a sequential and then the R32 ran into a lot of part problems so I gotta do a major shopping list for that but on any note hope you guys enjoyed the vlog